Do you think is it possible to enhance your dribbling from the beginner level to expert in only 10 days by using only 10 exercises, and your improvement to be so spectacular that even you'll be amazed at what you have become? Well, we know it is possible, and in this video, we will teach you how to do it. You need to be focused on the details we will reveal for each exercise, be committed to training consistently, and be patient till the end. The last two days are meant not only to further develop your handles to an elite level, but also to test your ability to freely use your hands independently by each other, and by that, you will be able to conclude that your brain has fully developed a sound network, as a base for your great career. Stay tuned, we start in a bit. We are Mihai Dumitrescu, IPT Certified Skill Enhancement Trainer, Highest Level Professional Team Coach, and Peter Peric First Tier International Professional Player in Croatia. Germany, and Slovakia, and if you truly want to master the art of basketball, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell, so you can keep learning how to become unstoppable. Our first exercise is a simple straight pound dribble, but there are some particularities you have to take into consideration, and which you might never be taught to. As you can see, we use the impossible footwork mat, which is a great tool to follow the next details. We encourage you to buy one, and in case you cannot do it, for now, make some marks on the floor, to be sure you dribble the ball hitting the same spot each time. The straight pound should not be produced from the hand or wrist, as some of us have been taught in the past. It should follow the same pattern as the shot, so the power must come from the shoulder down, and the palm should only follow through after the ball release. Then, your feet should be placed wider than your shoulder's frame. Focus on dribbling the ball in the same spot in a straight line for each rep you'll do, and keep in mind that it's crucial to dribble in front of your knee and not on the side of your body. Despite what most coaches ask from their players, we will urge you to look down, and study your dribbling, to look at how straight it is, and to improve it with each rep. Your brain needs to use all the receptors to produce a great outcome, and depriving it of eyesight will make everything harder. At the right time you will have no problem looking up during your dribbling, but for now, use your eyes for their purpose. Stay with this exercise for 20 minutes for each hand, and even if this looks easy, we assure you that it is not, if you stay focused and true with each rep. Moving on to the next day, we will add a med ball to your straight pound in two ways, for a high pound and a low pound. Med ball is meant to add pressure on your offhand, and as you progress through the exercise, and your arms get tired, that will distract your dribbling too. This is what we are looking for, to keep you engaged, and to manage different things with each hand. For the high pound, the arm should be fully extended with the med ball held downward. Your arm will get tired, and you will tend to lower it, that is why you should be aware of this issue and ready to correct your stance, as this happens. Regarding the dribbling, the same details as for the straight pound apply, wide stance, dribble in front of the knee, hit the same spot on the floor, engage the shoulder, and follow through as the ball is released. Stay 20 minutes at least with this one, and be ready for the next one. The second exercise of the day is a low pound, underneath the knee level. For this one, you will drop and catch the med ball before it touches the ground. Also, the dribbling should be energetic, and as you challenge yourself, try to dribble faster and faster. In case you lose the med ball, grab it and start over, but try not to stop your dribbles, in other words, nothing should interfere with your pounds. The same principles apply here. Wide feet, dribble in front of the knee in the same spot, look down, and go faster and faster. 20 minutes for this one two, 10 for each side, and if you get tired take a break and go on when you are ready. The third day is dedicated to another type of dribble, the turn pound, which is one of the most important techniques you will use in your career, along with pocket dribbling. We didn't include the pocket in our list of exercises, as we believe this one should be treated after you finish these 10 days, and for which, we've made a separate video, that you can check up here. The turn pound is the act of dribbling the ball in a circular motion toward the same spot on the floor. This is not an inside-out dribbling, which involves moving the ball over the middle of the body and back, so take care of that. To do it right, you'll need the same wide stance as for the previous ones, to pound the ball and hit the same spot on the floor, and as the ball floats up, you'll need to give it a circular motion, and again, as you release the ball, to follow it through, same as you do for the shot. 
This dribbling will be one of the most used in your game, as it gives you the time and balance to add any footwork that will propel you forward. Due to its importance, we ask you to stay 20 minutes on each side, or even more, till you feel it very natural. Day 4 is the day for the V dribble. This one is a fake dribble because it simulates a low crossover, but it is interrupted in the middle of it, and the ball is reversed back, using the same hand. It is useful when you want to trick the defender, or even when he overreacts to your crossover, so you will turn him instantly. We cannot say this one is commonly seen, but firstly, maybe players are unaware of its existence, which will give you a unique advantage, and secondly, even if you will not use it frequently, at the right time will pop up like hiccups in your game. Start in the same wide stance, take one dribble, start your crossover, and as the ball bounces to the other side, twist your hand, and dribble it back. The crossover should be low, and as wide as possible. Use your eyes again to correct any inadvertences, and pound the ball hard enough to be easy to maneuver it. 20 minutes on each side it's a must, but you can go more if you want. From the next day up, things will start to be a little more complicated. This is the day for the jolt dribble, which will help you to escape from any pressure situation, and which is a great addition that drove us to choose the video title Never Lose the Basketball Again It will be a certainty from now on. The jolt dribble is the art of maneuvering the ball low and bringing it up high in full control. It can be broken down into three parts, the first one is a strong pound dribble, followed by a stop of the ball at what looks to be a second dribble. It is not a dribble, but a deflection, which uses the energy of the first one. To do it you'll need to fully extend your arm as the ball hits your palm. The hard part comes with the third dribbling when you have to be able to bring the ball up again and retake full control for the next straight pound. Here is where you need to pay attention and stick to it. In between reps, feel free to take one two, or three dribbles, just stick on it for 20 minutes on each side, and you will not regret it. Day 6 is the transition day for working with two balls at the same time. The first exercise is two ball juggles, where you'll need to cross over one ball, and throw the other one from hand to hand, and so on. It is just like the juggling you've seen at the circus, but with only two balls. It is a great exercise that will move your focus from one ball to the other in a fraction of a second and will help you to develop that mental flexibility which will boost your game in a blink of an eye. It may look easy, but if you increase the speed to the point where you'll lose the ball, you will not say so anymore. And, if you truly think it is easy, try the variation you see now, one crossover, one under dribble, and one behind the back, and you'll be in big trouble at the beginning. Do this one for 20 minutes on each side, and if you go for the complicated version 2, AD 20 extra more. Let's move on to day 7 for 2 balls pin and peel, which is a great coordination exercise. Before you start, if you've never done alternative dribbling with 2 balls, take an extra 20 minutes for each side to get used to it. Moving on, you'll start by dribbling 5-6 times, or maybe more up to you, alternating, followed by one ball pinned down, while you'll keep the other ball dribble alive. Then, you'll have to raise the ball from the floor, by peeling it, meaning you'll place the hand on its top, and by a circular motion on its outside, you will grab it, and bring it up. Do the same action only on one side, pinning and peeling with the other hand each time, as Pero is showing in our video. The benefits of this exercise are many, and I will enumerate excellent coordination of two different things at the same time, great timing otherwise you'll lose one or both balls, shoulder drop simulating offhand ball protection, wide and low dribbling stance, and the most important one, your brain will change and adapt to this new experience, so during the game will fire and wire at a glance. Do it at least for 20 minutes on each side. The next day is day 8 which will bring a similar exercise, but a little bit harder, the two balls pin and pop. For this one, you will start with two balls alternating dribbling, and after a few pounds, you'll need to pin one ball down on the floor without any interference over the other dribbling. Then you'll need to pop the ball from the floor. To do this, you have to hit it with the back of your palm, hard enough to pick it up from the ground. Keep in mind, that with the hit, your hand has to follow the ball's momentum, and roll down with your fingers toward the floor. This is how you'll make the ball float straight up, from where you can dribble it again. The entire idea of the exercise is to increase your ability to keep dribbling no matter what, so even if the pin or the pop is unsuccessful, 
Try to focus to maintain your dribble at any cost. Paro is alternating the sides each time, but if you are not comfortable at the beginning, you can practice it only on one side at a time, and later to move on the other part. However, once you can do it, we advise you to do it exactly as Paro shows. Stay 20 minutes on each side, and at least 10 more minutes by alternating them. The last two days are the days that will boost your handles to the elite level, and also will be a great test to see how your dribbling skills have enhanced after the previous days. The exercises that we will show are called leapfrog, and we will do it with a crossover, and then we will double up. How does it work? Start in the same wide stance, which should be a habit now, and dribble both balls at the same time. The next action is to release one ball after the dribble, and the other one to cross over it underneath the first floating ball before this one touches the ground. So, to say it again simply, one ball is dribble released, and one is dribble exchanged. This may look unrealistic for some of you, but trust us, as you go and make mistake after mistake, in 4-5 minutes, it will clarify in your brain, and it will start working well. Just use your eyes to see what is happening. Paro is showing here the advanced version, where he switches sides with each rep, but you have to start with one side only. 20 minutes on each side and 20 more to switch it continuously, and you've already reached an outstanding level, which led us to the final day of your journey. On this day you will continue the leapfrog series by adding one more step up with a double crossover, while one ball is still in the air, and underneath it. Due to the double exchange, the execution speed will increase considerably, and as accountability, keep in mind the released ball should not float higher than waist level, and for its best version, right above the knee height. So, to sum up, one ball is released after the dribble, and the other one is crossed over and back under it. This exercise, the same as the previous one, requires the highest degree of quality skills, coordination, poise, and mental flexibility, and if you got here in only 10 days, which is rather possible than impossible, your handles are fully upgraded to a high level, and we can affirm that you will never lose the ball again. As a last piece of advice, we encourage you to embrace the mistakes you'll make along this process and to fully understand their benefits, in your development. There is no growth without mistake, and there is no success without failure, and despite whatever you've been taught to believe, remember every day the words of the great of the greatest, Michael Jordan, I failed over and over again, and that is why I succeed. Nothing truer than that. Well, we are at the end of this video, so we ask you to give those a try, and let us know how it went for you. If you have any trouble or question, let us know through a comment, so we can get back with a good answer for you. Also, you may want to check those videos up here too, as we believe that you will love them. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and we remind you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't done it yet set your notifications on, so you'll not lose anything in the future.